Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pull a conceptual mass into my project. Um, so just to show you how that works, I'm going to go ahead and open up uh, the conceptual mass that I've been working on, and we'll take a look at it. I've actually added a material parameter to this one, and I want to show you how I did that. Um, to add a material parameter, you pick a part of the form, and over here is a material, and you click on this little gray box, and then you click New Parameter, and just type in Form Material, and click OK. So again, that's just select somewhere on the form, and click on this gray box next to the Materials and Finishes, New Parameter, and give it a name, Form Material, and click OK. And I'm going to hit Cancel because I've already done it. And then click OK. And then when you go to your Family Types dialog box, you will have an option for Material. So you can change materials for different types. So a material is also a parameter, which is kind of exciting. I've left it by category. Um, it has a hard problem with the materials and recording. I'm not sure why, but um, I do have two materials on there, so we're just going to stick with those. Um, all right, so just click OK here. And what I'm going to do now is open up um, the intro project that we've been using. So I'll go ahead and go to my R pull down. It'll have my recent. Um, projects here that are in families that I've opened. If you want to move things, you can pin things and move them up and down if you want them higher or lower. And I'm just going to left click on this intro project. And it's going to open up that blank file template that I set up for you. And I'm going to go to the site. And I'm going to close my hidden windows. And I'm going to hit control tab. And that's going to flip me between my project and my family that's open. When I get into the family, I'm going to go to Load into Project. So if I click Load into Project, it brings that in, and it's a mass. So what it does is it turns on the Show Mass mode, which is a toggle under Massing and Site that makes all the masses visible. So I'm going to say, OK, that's great. I'm going to hit Close. And it's going to bring that mass in. It's going to be stuck to my cursor. And I'm just going to select the project base point to place it in the middle. Left click. And it wants to place more of them, but I don't want to place more of them, so I'm going to hit Escape. Escape. And if I go to my 3D view, right, I zoom in, and I go to a shaded mode. There's that guy. Now, by default, if anything has a by category under the mass, it's going to be uh, transparent. In this particular file, I don't want it to be transparent, so I'm going to change that. And I'm going to do that by going to my Manage tab and my Object Styles. And here's the masses, and that's what the Revit sees these as, is masses. There's a couple of things here. I'd like to change my my line weight cut for my masses to something thicker than two, which is a pretty thin line weight. And I'd also like to update the default material. So I'm going to go to two here, and I'm going to go to the pull down. I'm going to change that to six, which is going to make it much thicker. And I'm going to go to this default form. And I'm going to left click on it, and I'm going to get rid of the transparency, right? And um, Let's just use a shading appearance of white, which is fine with me. So this is what it looks like in the viewport. So I'm changing what happens when I choose shaded. And the appearance is actually just a generic gray. So when it renders, it renders a generic gray. I'm just going to make it white. And I'll click OK and click OK. And now you'll see that has turned a solid white. Um, so anything that now has that default category on it will be a solid white. All right. So if I pick this, you can see that I have my conceptual mass 60, but I can also pick the other ones that I made, right? So if I go 2060, 
right? There's the chipboard one. Let's go to 6040, right? That one's going to be the solid white. So you can do various different selections. It's almost like having different window types, right? So you can go in and choose and adjust which ones you want. What's the 40 look like? So the 40 is the one that I put glass on, right? So if I didn't want that glass on there, I could pick this and I could go to edit type and it would show me all of the parameters that I had set for that particular um, type. So I could change the glass here. Oops. Change the glass right to zinc, you know. Click OK and click OK. And now that is zinc. OK. All right. So let's take a look and see what it looks like um, in our plan. So let's go to plan two schematic. So there it is cutting, right? And this is a shaded view and the zinc is actually pretty dark. So we may potentially want to change our cut color to something a little bit more um, visible. So I'm just going to come over here and type VV. And you'll see right now we have these cut patterns set all to gray. And I'm just going to select the top one and shift and click on those. And let's just change it to, we'll change it to red. Okay. And click OK. And you'll see that it changes all of the section cuts to red. So that includes the mass, which is what we're working in right now. So it should update that to a red section cut. Now I could come in and say, Create view template from view, and I'll name this plan schematic red, right? And it'll put that within my view templates, and I can actually come in and apply that template property now that I've saved it, right? And so now if I go to plan one, It'll be set up like that as well. And I can do that for the sections and the elevations. So let's go ahead to our composition sheet and see what that looks like. So you can see I've updated that to red. This, that's actually the floor plan. That's actually the building section. So it's got a red on it too that's a little different. So we would want to update that and make them the same. So if I double click on that, go to VV, slight different. Oh, actually, it's probably the difference in the way that the sun is hitting it, which is a little difficult. So we would need to maybe on this one. Or on the other one, do they have sun? No, the sun's not on, so I'm not sure. It's just the ambient light, perhaps, the way that it's working. Um, but this one, we could go in and go to VV and set that cut pattern to a solid red. So you can kind of see how... Right, so so now that I don't know why. I think it's because the ambient light is a little higher in this one because it's directly hitting the sun. So if I go to the graphic display options, I may be able to turn the ambient lighting down a little bit. Let's see if that works. Yeah, I think it is the ambient light. So if I turn that to none and click OK and then... Deactivate that view. It's getting closer. Um, let's go ahead and delete this one. This one's a little weird. Um, but these guys, too, a little strange, right? This has got some transparency on it. Um, and it's also cutting in kind of a weird way. So if we were to go look and see where those things are cutting, like we go to plan one, 
that's where those sections are cutting. So we may potentially want to just, you know, move those. I'm going to filter out everything but the views. But, you know, move them so they're not, not cutting anything, right? So maybe a little bit back like that. And then if we go back, of course, that will have adjusted all the sections. So you'd have to do, you know, a little bit of adjustment to go in here, and we could change the way that those looked. We need to update that view. So this is a significantly different model than the one that we looked at before, so you will have to update it. And, of course, the rendering has no use at all because it was taken from a previous model. Um, so you, there is a bit of updating to do, but the... Uh, the template's really helpful. So, all right, that's it.